Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's edition of the Midweek Minutes. There are a couple of things just to call to your attention. Uh, the first is remember that this Sunday following our Sunday morning 11 a.m. service, we will have our first in a while uh, business session discussion. Uh, that'll remain in the sanctuary. We'll begin roughly around 12.15. We're targeting a specific time such as that for this reason. Uh, it will also be live streamed for those who still feel uh, best, that it's best for them uh, not to begin regathering. Uh, that business session will primarily be discussion. Uh, we do not anticipate, and if any requests for voting on a matter is brought up, that will have to be deferred or deferred to committee uh, because we do not have the voting mechanism in place uh, for the hybrid meeting that we have. Uh, we will be doing that in our annual session where we discuss and vote and approve the budget and the leadership roster. That's coming up at the end of June, and we'll talk more about that later, including on this Sunday. Uh, but as far as Sunday, May 16th, this coming Sunday is concerned, it's primarily an information and somewhat of a question and answer uh, roundtable type of meeting. Although we're not sitting around the roundtables in the fellowship hall, we'll remain for social distancing and capacity uh, in the sanctuary. Now, we want to encourage every church member to participate, and here's my three ways, and you have attached to this email, or this email to which this video is attached, uh, specific instructions of how you can be involved uh, in listening and even discussing and asking questions. My favorite way would be for you to be present. Uh, we have begun regathering. So many of you have. Uh, you know that there are times we have reached COVID capacity, as it were, uh, in recent weeks and months. Uh, there are times we don't, uh, but we anticipate being able to fit everybody into the sanctuary that would like. Uh, we are in the process, even this week, of making some adjustments to the seating chart, so to speak, uh, which will give us just a few extra places of seating uh, the leadership uh, staff and, and, and committee has the board, for example, uh, they'll be on the platform that'll free up some spaces. So there should be a, a safe social distance seating available for everyone who wants to come to the sanctuary. And if it gets tight, we do have some ways to expand that by a few extras. Uh, so please plan to be here. Uh, it's a safe environment. We are still requesting that you wear the mask. That's still a part of the protocols. We've heard uh, that by mid-June, some of those limitations under which we've had to operate will be phasing out. And we're all excited about that. But it's mid-May, not mid-June, and so we still have to honor that, and we want to make everyone feel as comfortable and safe as possible. So we will ask that as you return, both for worship and uh, for this business time, that you do wear a mask and that you do help and cooperate with us on the, the seating capacity and how that has to be arranged. Uh, those days are quickly winding down, we trust, but we're still right in the middle of them. Uh, but this Sunday is an important time. So I want to encourage you to be here. Be here for worship at 11. Uh, there's something about being together uh, that will add, I think, to the worship experience. It's It feels like worship in a box is what I've said. The box is this thing, your computer screen or your television, perhaps if you uh, watch on, on a larger screen, uh, even in the sanctuary, it feels kind of church in a box because it's very limited. Again, those days are winding down, uh, but be here. I'd encourage you to be here. It's, it's safe. Uh, if you feel comfortable doing that, if your family, if that's a discussion you've had, uh, this coming Sunday would be a great Sunday for you to begin regathering. And if you've begun regathering, but make it a once a month, every other week kind of thing, make this the week that you're here. That will help you uh, in the, the clearest and, and easiest way participate in listening and discussing uh, the days to come uh, at Fairfax Baptist Church. So that's my favorite. That's my highest suggestion. We certainly understand, though, that there are those who, for a variety of reasons, whether it's just an acute 
issue right now, even not even related to COVID, uh, but certainly with COVID concerns. And if you're in a, a profile in which uh, that concern is heightened, uh, we understand that. And that's why we continue to stream our services. That's why we offer at least one uh, Bible study that has a hybrid Zoom connection for those of you who feel better connecting that way. No judgment there at all, uh, but we just want to invite you back, but know that there will be live streaming available for the business session. Now, again, in the email in which you receive this video, there are specific instructions of how you can be involved in the live stream version. Uh, you're going to be provided prior to that meeting, uh, very shortly prior, you will be receiving an email if you are a church member that contains the link uh, that will bring you into this private video. Our worship service is beamed worldwide. We've had people in China. We have people all across the country, um, guests, former members alike uh, that are, are watching and participating. Uh, and if they're church members, if you're a church member, even across the miles, and you're a church member that would receive that, you're going to be able to participate as well. So whether you're across the miles or just down the street, uh, if you're a church member that's not regathering, that wants to participate, but doesn't really feel like it's time to begin regathering, uh, you will have an opportunity to watch that live. That link will be provided to you. There's written instructions of how to do that. Now, the one limitation for that is, and that is your involvement beyond listening. Uh, if that's all you want to do, that, that's an option for you just to gain that information and to have it before you. But if you want to participate, if there's a question that you have, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Uh, my favorite way, if you're not going to come, uh, next best thing is to watch in a live stream fashion. Uh, you're going to be able, if you have um, a question in mind or a comment, something you wanted to bring up, you can email that to us now. If you know you're not going to be here, uh, send us an email. You can respond to this link. Uh, you can email any of the appropriate board members. For example, if you have a question about what does this number mean or this column that you might want Chuck or maybe Charlotte to clarify, chances are there are others who might have that very same question. And we'll say, church member Susie, uh, ask the question, Chuck, can you explain what this number is? Chuck will already know because we've received that email and, oh, let me, let me clarify, we've had some questions about this. So your involvement doesn't have to wait until Sunday if there's a question that you have, even if you plan to be here. Uh, it's easier to ask that question, particularly when it comes to the spreadsheet of the finances or a question about a certain upcoming event uh, to not catch that person perhaps flat-footed. So ask that question. Uh, you can send an email to that appropriate person or our church roster, most of you have, I would trust, uh, has all the, the emails for our leadership and, and send them a text, give them a phone call, ask that question beforehand, and that'll help us out a great deal. If, however, you are watching and there is something that pops up, it, it was unclear, an explanation, you will have a number, you have it attached here on this email where you can text. Now, we're going to ask you not to call uh, because that can be a little disruptive in the moment, but, but texting more people can respond to that same number kind of all at once, and we will have somebody monitoring that number. That number is provided for you in the text portion of this email. And so that number, text the question, Chuck said this, or Anna said this, or Pastor Joby, what did you mean when you said this? You can text that. And that person, uh, one of our techs, uh, representatives upstairs, I believe it's going to be David. In fact, that's his cell number that, that you have. Um, you can text him and he will have a microphone. He'll be ready to say, so-and-so asked, would you repeat that? So-and-so asked, could you say more? We want to give you that opportunity. Now, I know that's not ideal. And I know that for many of you who uh, feel that the time is not right to regather, you may think, hey, I'm not a texter. Um, but, but many of you are, because I get those texts and we've communicated that way uh, even long before COVID. But that is an option for you uh, to, to reach out in the moment. Uh, so 
please feel free. Number one, my favorite, be here. Number two, send a question beforehand, watch it live stream. And in the moment, if you feel like there's a question that needs to be interjected, uh, feel free to reach out via text. Again, there, we don't anticipate any voting, anything that is brought up to like, hey, can we decide X? Uh, we will most likely defer uh, to committee or defer to a business meeting where we have that structure set up. Just to let you know, if you remember back when we had our, our some decisions that we had to make during COVID in the earlier days, one was revolving how we can communicate and negotiate and be flexible with uh, the Montessori school that was in the process of relocating. And we ask you uh, via email to respond as a vote. Uh, we also, when we came to the decision for leadership and finances and so forth, uh, we had an, an opportunity for you to vote online kind of through a survey type format. Uh, one of the things as an incorporated entity under the Commonwealth of Virginia, when it comes to voting matters, everybody has to have the same platform. That was one of the things that uh, our attorneys really reminded all of their churches about. Uh, this is how you have to do it. And so that hybrid meeting is kind of awkward and we're still trying to work through that. We may be able to kind of do a combo type thing. But our next meeting, by the way, if you remember, should be after all of those or most of those limitations are reduced. And so uh, we, we certainly have perhaps even greater capacity and greater comfort for you to attend. So that's one reason we're not uh, anticipating and providing ballots because it's hard to do on an unknown issue uh, that might come from the floor. So be patient with us on that, cooperate with us on that. And if there is something that the church needs to decide on um, in the coming days, you certainly will have that opportunity church-wide. If something needs to be deferred to a committee, to the board, uh, we certainly can hear that on Sunday as well. Well, that's, that's the techno stuff. Again, you may wanna rewatch at least this first half uh, just if, particularly if you plan not to be here, but still want to participate. Uh, and again, in the text of the email, you've got the contact information and more specific instructions printed out and be ready to go on Sunday. Now, let me shift gears for just a moment from the administrative aspect of being a pastor to just the pastoral part of being a pastor. One reason uh, this this week's uh, midweek minutes is a little bit delayed. Sometimes we send it out on Thursdays. We kind of target for Wednesdays, and uh, but sometimes it's Thursday. Today is Thursday uh, when when I'm actually recording this, and you should be getting it in the next few hours. Uh, we wanted to give our deacons an opportunity, at least a 24-hour window, to do some outreach to our congregation. If what I'm about to share with you, you were not aware of. Uh, don't chasten your deacon. Uh, they have jobs, they have responsibilities, and it's only been uh, literally 24 hours. Many of you, though, may have already heard word that Madeline Tankard went home to be with the Lord, uh, not last night, but the night before last uh, on Tuesday evening, a little after 10 p.m. Uh, for those of you and those of us who had an opportunity either to visit with her, to talk with her, uh, send her those emails and so forth, know that that was a, a much appreciated gesture. And her arrival um, out of rehab and back into the assisted living or into the assisted living for the first time, um, it was fatiguing, um, but yet she had a really, really good day on Tuesday. And there's some of you who had an opportunity to take advantage of that good day and visiting with her, as well as maybe even talking with her on the phone. But after that really good day, kind of that one day of normalcy, the Lord saw fit to call her home. And so many of you, if not most, I would hope, uh, we're aware of that information, but I would be remiss. I just, uh, as I talked with our deacons yesterday, I said, I just, I can't do the midweek minutes with that hanging over me. We found out early, early uh, yesterday morning when Mary, who was already back out, that's her daughter, back out in Washington State, uh, was able to communicate with us. So many of us here on the East Coast 
uh, we woke up to that news in our email. I did talk with Mary at length yesterday, uh, and we are tentatively looking at the possibility, hopefully the likelihood of a memorial service. Yes, here in the church sanctuary, uh, that is what Madeline wanted, and we're going to honor that uh, to the best of our ability. Uh, we do not know when that is going to be. We would hope that it would be sometime the middle part to the latter part of next week, about a week from now, perhaps. But you will receive uh, all of that information once that information uh, is made available and actually determined. Uh, it will be here. Burial is just right down the street. Uh, everything will be local. There's still some limitations that both the funeral home as well as even our church family uh, in doing a funeral church service and doing the meals like we normally would do. Uh, there's some limitations, some hoops we have to jump through. And we're working through those. Uh, so again, I don't have specifics to share with you, but just heart to heart. Uh, we, we woke up yesterday morning to that news and our hearts and prayers go out to Madeline's family, to Mary, uh, her daughter out West and her family, to Bud, her son and his family up up, up in Baltimore. Uh, we know that uh, we'll be seeing them in the coming days. Uh, keep them in your prayers, and again, we'll give you information of how to get in touch, to send sympathies, uh, and when those arrangements are made, we will certainly uh, keep her church family, who she loves so dearly, uh, in the loop right away. Well, I just got to close out on that because I need a tissue. Um, going to miss Miss Madeline. So Madeline, thank you for all you've done for our church. And I hope that in uh, these days, uh, through those limitations and those frustrations, you and your family have felt um, the love, the ministry uh, embrace that we could through text and phone calls and socially distant visits. So we loved her and church family. With that, we hope to see you on Sunday and know that we'll have a busy week next week, and we hope to see you in the capacity in which we're able to, to embrace the family in the days to come. So with that, have a great rest of the week. Remember Madeline Tanker's family in your prayers, and we look forward to seeing you for worship this weekend.